Hey guys, this is Claudio Giuliano here, and today I am coming at you with a new review, and today we are going to be reviewing the 2019 iPad Mini, which also now supports the first generation Apple Pencil. So I wanted to check the new Mini out for myself, but I also wanted to review it for you guys. And of course, we're going to be covering the new Mini from the standpoint of the creative professional. So we're going to see how the machine performs for creative tasks, but we're also going to cover a wide range of different things. So regardless of what you do or what you want to do with this machine, if you are thinking about getting it, uh, I think in today's review, you will gather good information about this tool. So I personally wanted to check out the Mini for a couple different reasons. One is, of course, it now supporting the first generation Apple Pencil. I do wish it was supporting the second generation Pencil. We'll talk more about that in a little bit. But the other main reason is the portability and just how small this iPad Mini is. Yet it also retains a certain comfort when you are working on it because the display is a lot bigger than a smartphone but this ipad mini is such a small form factor that it actually can fit in your pocket and for me having a portable art tool of this size and of this portability yet with all of this power was really intriguing to me because the new mini is really kind of like a shrunken down 10.5 inch iPad Pro, uh, except it has the A12 chip in it and that gives it a lot of power for doing creative tasks. And the other thing is when we look at it from the small tablet perspective, when you compare things, there's really nothing out there that brings this much power and brings a system that gives the user many options when it comes to software and when it comes to pro-level software as well, at least in terms of uh, pro-level software for the creative. And when you look at the Mini from the big picture, I think the starting price point of $399 is a great value. And then if we look at this from the digital art tool perspective, this is another area where there is really nothing out there like this that is this small, that is something that is pocketable that you can hold in the palm of your hand and create with. And I also think this is a great companion to an 11 inch or 12.9 inch iPad Pro for a variety of different reasons. One is there's certain situations where you just don't want to take your high end machine with you, your very expensive machine. It's, you know, the both the 12.9 and the 11 inch are very portable. You can take them anywhere. They're ultra portable, but there's certain situations where you don't want to take your very expensive dedicated machine with you. If you have access to a mini, this is a thing that you can put in your pocket and it's so small, you can take it with you without it taking up much space at all. And you still have enough screen to enjoyably work on. And because you can use this in the palm of your hand with one hand, this also gives you relief on your back from working on the larger machines. We are getting a fully laminated retina display with True Tone, which supports the P3 wide color gamut, and it looks great. So I wanted to do a quick comparison of the Mini next to the 11-inch iPad Pro. It is a lot smaller than the 11-inch iPad Pro, and the pictures don't really serve it justice just how much smaller it is. We don't have Face ID on the new Mini. We will be logging in with Touch ID, but it is fast and familiar. And we get a bonus being that we get a headphone jack with the Mini as well. So we're going to get right into it. We're going to start working and we're going to see how this machine performs for creation. So right now I have Procreate open and I am using the new brush indexes that I just recently announced. They are now live in the store. We have the Real Paint Index, the Real Ink Index, and the Real Pencil Index. And the Paint Index is made up of brushes that have complex blending. We have a pretty large document open here, 15 by 15 at 300 DPI, and you can see how the Mini and the A12 is handling 
these brushes with no problem. Everything is fast and fluid. However, with Procreate specifically, you're going to run into some limitations because we're only getting three gigs of RAM with the Mini. I wish Apple put four gigs in. Uh, these limitations don't exist in other softwares like Art Studio Pro or Clip Studio Paint, but because of this RAM limitation, you will run into size limitations and layer limitations. So you can't do a 20 by 20 at 300 DPI in Procreate on the Mini. You can't do a 18 by 24, but there is a way to work around it. If you already have an iPad Pro or another iPad, you can, uh, you know, if you have a piece already in your backup, when you open that piece, if let's say it's a 20 by 20 or an 18 by 24, that piece will open up and you can work on it. So there is a way to work around the size limitation with Procreate. Other softwares like Art Studio Pro and Clip Studio Paint, uh, you don't really have to worry about that there because there's, uh, there's no size limitations with those softwares. There is a way to work around it. Now the feel with the Apple Pencil is great. And I also want you to take note of how I have this thing in the palm of my hand with this grip and I'm able to create art with it. And this is what I mean about it giving you relief on your back because of the small form factor and the fact that you can work with it in the palm of your hand. You can picture using this when you're standing up, if you were outside doing a study, if you were at a life drawing session or something like that. Um, you know, being able to now have the pencil input with the mini and having this tool that you can hold in the palm of your hand, I really find it powerful for art. You know, not for doing your work 100% of the time, but for certain situations when you want to have this smaller form factor. Um, I find it really enjoyable to work on and I find it comfortable to work on as well. Uh, because of how you can palm this tool in your hand. Uh, of course, I do wish the second generation pencil was here. I keep trying to double tap this first gen pencil. And also, if you go an extended period of time without using the first gen pencil and you go back to it from the second gen, you can really feel the improvements of the second generation even more. Uh, so that is noticeable. However, it is still very enjoyable to use. The first gen pencil, when it comes to the input, is pretty much just as good as the second gen. There's minor improvements in the second gen pencil when it comes to the input. So I am now hopping in and out of softwares. I just opened up Art Studio Pro. And because we get these full screen experiences in things like Art Studio Pro and Procreate, it makes this screen enjoyable and comfortable to work on. And then you can flip it into landscape mode, and this is where having the bezels on the side come in kind of handy because you can get this grip on it on the bezel and hold it in one hand comfortably for an extended period of time when you are working. And we are getting great performance in Art Studio Pro. And as you can see here, I'm hopping back and forth between two different softwares with large scale canvases on. You can see how fluid the performance is. I'm now gonna put in a 20 by 20 at 300 DPI in Art Studio Pro. And I have a nice update coming for the brush indexes for Art Studio Pro. That's what I'm showing you here right now. They have all new blending built into the designs and that will be coming soon. But as you can see here on the 20 by 20 at 300 DPI, you can see the complex brushes just flying here with the mini. Everything is fast and fluid, and it's just a really powerful performer. Now we have Clip Studio Paint open. I have two large-scale, high-resolution pieces open, and I have another document open here at 300 DPI, and Clip Studio Paint performance is also great. Now it's gonna be a little bit harder to work with Clip in landscape mode uh, because of the way the UI is set up, but when you do flip it into portrait, you can get the UI out of your way, and you have nice screen real estate state to work on. So Clip uh, can definitely be worked with with the Mini. We're getting natural tilt with the first generation pencil still, and this is a really great art tool, enjoyable to work with. And I think now with having the pencil support, having the fully laminated retina display with the P3 wide color gamut, I think all of these things combined really do change the machine.
I think this is a great small form factor digital art tool, and I think it's a first of a kind because of the power that's built in, the size, the portability, uh, the package with the pencil, everything that's built in. So there's ultra portability, but in the case of the Mini, we have ultimate portability. And there's really nothing out there in this size or scale that has this much power or abilities. Another great pro level software that is really changing things for me when it comes to vector creation on the iPad and iOS is Vectornator. We're gonna do a separate video on Vectornator, overviewing it and talking about it uh, because it's really changing the game for me when it comes to vector creation with iPad and it works great on the mini. Uh, and there's also a full version of the software for the iPhone so you get it in your pocket as well. And this for me is very impactful because I'm doing both raster work and vector work. And many of my client files are vector files. So if I was in a situation where I wanted to go meet with a customer, I could put the iPad mini in my pocket and it's large enough for the customer to get a nice view on their design. I could really pull this out of my pocket and if I was meeting with a client at their location, I would be able to pull this out and start directly working on or making adjustments to their design right on the spot. And I find that to be very powerful. You can really get impactful things done with this tool. Of course, LumaFusion also works great with the Mini and it scales awesome. You can use it in both portrait and landscape. It is fast and fluid, there's no lag, and you're getting this full professional grade editing experience in the palm of your hand. And it's another thing that I find very powerful. This is very much a handheld device. It invites you to use it in the palm of your hand. However, I do wish there was a Pogo connector for a iPad Pro smart keyboard. They probably considered it and probably couldn't fit it, but in the future, I definitely want to see a smart keyboard for the iPad mini. And really in the future, I wanna see a mini iPad Pro. Uh, I think a lot of people would love it, and I think a lot of people would use a mini iPad Pro as a companion to their bigger iPad Pro. I would love to have this with a second-gen pencil and magnetic charging connector. I would love to have this with the thin bezel, new screen, liquid retina display. But at the same time, you know, this price point that the mini hits at $399 um, is a thing that I think really defines the product. I think that defines the iPad mini, this price point that it hits. So, you know, if they did come with an iPad Pro version of this mini, you know, that would probably increase its price by a substantial amount. Uh, and I'm glad they didn't do that right now because the price point allows many people to get this machine. And for me, I, I love to see something that kind of uh, allows people to get into the digital arts without having to really break their pockets. And that goes for other forms of creation as well, especially for music, because again, getting into this at $399, uh, this unlocks a very powerful music creation tool, a very powerful instrument, um, and uh, I really think that's a great value. Uh, also for video editing. So you know, a variety of use cases when it comes to creation. So I'm definitely with you guys on wishing that this was a mini iPad Pro, wishing that all those iPad Pro features were here. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to see the price sacrificed. With this 2019 iPad mini, you're kind of getting the old and new at the same time. And that new that's inside the machine is very impactful and it makes this a very powerful tool to have when you consider its portability when you consider the great display you're getting when you consider the pencil support when you consider that you're getting a headphone jack you know i feel like if the price was sacrificed then uh it wouldn't have as much impact. And I think that's what gives it the impact it has. Also, the smaller form factor of the Mini makes it really great for taking notes. So we're not getting the quad speaker system here, but the speakers still sound good and I wanted to show you that.
So you are getting decent speakers for content consumption and also for creation and things like that, but they're not going to be as full and loud and with that surround kind of sound that the iPad Pro gets with the quad speaker system, but they are really good for the size that they are being so tiny. So I've really been putting this new iPad mini through all of the tests I would put any other pro level machine through. And that's what's so impressive about this little tablet. You know, it's not being sold as a pro level machine, but it is accomplishing all of the pro level tasks that I have been putting it through. And that is what is so impressive about this little tablet. From multitasking to actually working in pro level softwares at high resolution and large scale when it comes to video editing, music creation. So the new iPad mini is very much a content creation machine and it's also a great content consumption machine as well. It's really kind of bringing forth both of those experiences together. And I think it's doing it in a really cool package in a form factor that is small that could fit in your pocket, that is light that you can pick up and hold in the palm of your hand, that you can take with you anywhere very easily. It's portable like a smartphone, but it's giving you a display and working canvas much larger than any smartphone. And that is what makes the iPad mini sit in this place of its own. It's this unique tool and it's really one of a kind. And in my test with it, I've really enjoyed using it. I really enjoy it a lot. And if you are looking for something small form, whether it be as a companion to a bigger iPad Pro or as just your dedicated machine, I really think the iPad mini will be something that you get great use out of because of how powerful it is and because of the package it brings forth. So I can definitely recommend the iPad mini. Guys, I want to thank you for tuning in today. If you like this review, it'd be great if you could share it with your friends, if you could give it a thumbs up, if you can comment, but most of all, it would be best if you can subscribe. We will be back with a lot more soon. Have a great day.